Okay, my name is Mofo Beji Samuel. I'm here to also bring you guys or take you guys to the HEP and then the VS. That's the vertical electrical sound, then that's the VS, and then the HEP being the electrical, uh, the horizontal electrical profile. But you will do the VS first. And as, as I said, the VES means that you are investigating at the same stage but at varying depth or different depth. And different depth means that you are increasing or moving the current electrodes. We have four electrodes, the current and the potential, the C1, the C2, the P1 and the P2 at the time. So when you are being given a traverse of 100 meters, that's the total spread, and you are investigating at the, at the station, 50 meters. What it means is that you will need your four electrode, which is your M, N, and then your A, and then your B. So in, in case a question of this sort is being given to you as investigate station of, let's say, station of, let's say, 50 meters with a constant M, N, of S8, which means that your MN over 2 uh, is 4. Uh, Alright? Uh -huh. So if this 4, yeah. in other words, you can choose to write the MN over yeah. MN to equals to 8. Yeah. And then with this, you will be, you'll be advised to create or you'll be given to create a data sheet for your, your data. Right? So assuming that you are going to the field and then you need to create a data sheet for yourself. So per this data being given to you in total spread, Total spread being 100 meters. Okay, 100 meters. So all that you need to do is to create your data sheet. All right. So here will be your A B over two. This is your C one. This is your C two. This is your P one. C two. Okay, so we are choosing the age over to which is equivalent to the depth from 10, 20, 30, 40. Because of this video, let's choose some small, small ones like small points, let's say 30, 40, and then the 50. Well, let me choose, let's say 60. Yeah, 50. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can see that this sheet also corresponds to this. But here be the case, as as was given, your M N equals to eight, and then your your station is also about fifty meters, and the total spread is about hundred meters. Forty percent of the total. Okay. Uh -huh. So if if that is the case, James. James. James, James, Mr. Manago, I'm going to cover Uh huh. So, uh -huh. so let's assume that we'll be giving you your. You have to find your C1, C2, C, P1, K2. These are your electrode positions, right? So, the C1, if you are giving a station, let's say 50, if you are starting at 50 and you are going to the depth of 30 meters, that means that 50, you go to the left 50, you go to the right. Here 50. This depth being 30 meters, if you stand at 30, I 50, you go 30 here, 30 here. So if you are going, let's see, if your traverse line starts from zero by starting from here, and then you want to go 30 meters, what does it mean that you have to go 30 meters here? 30 meters here. So when you subtract 30 from 50, you are going to get 20. That's where your C1 or your A, your A is going to be. Okay? Uh -huh. so, so the C1, that means that if you are going here, it's supposed to be what? The 20. So you are supposed to come here as your 20. That is going to be your C1. For when you are investigating to the depth of 30 meters. And you must add another 30 to this one. That's here being what? 80 meters. And 80 meters is going to be your C2. So look, if you have 50 meters, you are standing on 50 meters. The total spread is supposed to be what? 60 meters because your AB must be what? 60 meters if you are investigating to a depth of 30 meters. You have to get the total spread of 60. So that from here to here will be 60. Okay, so 30 meters here, 30 meters there. Add them, 60. So here your C2 is going to be what? 80. Okay, 
And you can see that we are investigating at the same station, but with a very depth. And as I said, when you go or when you are increasing the seas, that means that you are probing to a greater depth. So if that is the case, what we need to do is to increase or make sure that since our um, MN over 2 is 4, or when MN is 8, you must get to know that your MN over 2 is 4. So you, if you are standing 50 meters here, 50 meters here, you are 4 meters to the side, 4 meters to the side. So you subtract 44 from 50, it is going to be your 46, and you add 4 to the 50, making 54. Since you are performing BES, your potential electrode is constant, so you don't have to move it. So your P1 and P2 is going to be constant throughout. 46, 54, 46, 54. Okay, so the problem that we'll be having is because we are investigating at different depths, your C1 and your C2 must also be increasing. Okay, so all that you need here is that you also go to the next position. That's you are investigating 40 meters. If you are standing here, and as I said, if you are standing here, that you have to go 40 here, 40 to this side. So you subtract 40 from the 50, you get to add 10. Okay? And then add 40 to the 50, you are going to get 90. And let's go to the 50. If you are investigating at 50 meters depth, we need a total speed of 100. So you subtract 50 from 50, you are going to get 0. So the 60, the 0 is going to be for the position of C1. And then you add 50 to the hand, uh, 50 are going to add 100. This one is symmetric. Okay, so this is a symmetric what approach. If you are using a symmetric one, okay, this is if you have your station to be at the center. But let's assume that, okay, okay, if you get something like this, if you get your data sheet like this, and you know if you are to use this data to find the geometric factor, you can see that. You have to find your R1, your R2, and then your R3, and then your R4. You can see that, and you know that R1 is C1, P1, R2 is C2, P1, and then your R3 is equal to C1, P2, and then R4 is C2, P2. Okay? So, to find your R1, which is the C1, P1 from the data, is we check your C1 here. C1 is 20 and then your P1 is 46. So you subtract the smallest from the biggest. That is, it's going to sub you subtract 20 from 46. Which is going to be what? 26. Alright? And then the next one is C2, P1. C2, P1. So you subtract 46 from this. I'm going to get 34. Okay? And then your R3 equals to C1, P2. So you subtract this one from this. 20 minus. 54 minus 20, 34. And then we go to the next one, which is C2, P2. So C2, which is P2, which is 54, my, um, 80 minus 54, which we are going to get 26. So 26. Since you've gotten your, your R's, you can, you can get, um, you can derive your G inverse, which is equal to 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2 minus 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4 <coughs> inverse. So you do substitution, right? So here is going to be equal to 1 all over 26 minus 1 all over 34 minus 1 all over 1 all over 34 here plus 1 all over 26 inverse. So if you're able to get your G inverse, you can find the geometric factor, which is K. K equals to 2 pi G inverse. Okay? And since you know your G inverse, and you know 2 pi is, is you can just compute on your calculator. You just put, you, you find overall the G inverse, and then you attach Two pi and then we get it. But we know that apparent resistivity equals to R times the K, where R times the K, where your R according to Ohm's law is changing V over what I. So in the field, you'll be given the the change the uh, voltage and then you'll be given the current. So there are three parameters that you you, you you measure in the field. You have the interelectro spacing your current and your potential, uh, potential and the voltage. So you, 
because you have your voltage and then you have your current, mm -hmm. you can compute them to get your resistance. And when you get a resistance and you multiply it by your K, you are going to get your apparent resistivity, which is K R. Okay. So thank you very much. And then this one is for the symmetric array. Okay, this is for a symmetric array. Okay, so we are moving straight to the asymmetric array. Pause.